Before we get to today's episode, we want to introduce you to our newest partner, which, like us, is Pure South Florida. That's Doral Toyota, where you can find all of your favorite Toyota models, whether you're looking for a new, used, or certified pre-owned vehicle. Doral Toyota is located at 9775 Northwest 12th Street. That's 9775 Northwest 12th Street, just a few blocks from International and Dolphin Malls. Experience the Doral difference, which means four years of complimentary maintenance and roadside assistance on all new vehicles. Also, in-house financing is available for credit-related issues. If you mention five reasons when you call 305-680-1129, that's 305-680-1129, or stop into the dealership, you work with a dedicated manager, not a salesman. Unlike other dealers, Doral Toyota prides itself on an honest and transparent buying process. That's Doral Toyota, DoralToyota.com, or stop in at 9775 Northwest 12th Street. Vamos! Let's go! Welcome into this edition of the Five Reasons Podcast. My name is Chris Whittingham, joined as always by Ethan Skolnick. We're going to talk to Jakeem Grant here of the Miami Dolphins. And before we do that, we do want to tell you about some of the other podcasts in our network. We have obviously want to focus on the football-related podcast. So three yards per carry on the Miami Dolphins has been brilliant throughout training camp. Be sure to check them out. The Fish Tank has had some incredible episodes lately, including with Zach Thomas and Tony Iguas, their former equipment manager, who has some brilliant stories, particularly about his time on set on the movie Any Given Sunday. And then Fantasy on Five, David Gano, Gary, and Thorne getting you ready for your fantasy drafts, which are coming up soon. Get your fantasy football information. We'll also be going during the season before waiver day and before roster set day. So be sure to check out Fantasy on Five. But now let's talk to Jakeem Grant. He is on Twitter at underscore the dream is here. He wears jersey number 19, but we all know he's the fastest receiver on the Miami Dolphins. Jakeem, thanks for doing this. Oh, no problem, man. I'm glad to be here and talk to you guys. One of the things that we want to get to, we kind of want to go through kind of your life story a little bit and, and go from the beginning to where you are now as, as a professional entering your third season in the NFL. But we know that you are uh, very competitive in terms of wanting to be the fastest guy on the team and wanting to be the strongest guy on the team. So there are, are, are sort of conflicting reports about how fast you actually are. When's the last time that you were timed and what is the number that you say that you run? That's the guy I was timed uh, was at a at pro day was uh, they taught me at a four one, but usually you know I usually break the clock, so I never could really get a time on it actually. So nobody never knows they they don't they they want to say I ran a four three, but let's be honest here, I don't run I don't run a four three. I want to ask you again about that four point one time because from what I saw, Jakeem, the only guy who's ever run that fast is Bo Jackson. So before we get to the guys on your team, you and Bo. Bo in his prime. Bo knows everything. Does Bo win a race against Jakeem Grant? Nobody wins a race against me. Um, <laughs> yeah, Bo is fast. Man, I watched him when I was I watched him growing up. But no, he he doesn't he doesn't win a race against me. I'm sorry. So so who on your team do you think? Now you, you said no, no one wins a race against Jakeem Grant. But who on your team do you think has the best chance? It's kind of hard to say because uh, Kenny's fast, Albert is fast, Tori's fast. I'll say, you know, just put us all on the line and let's do it. I mean, I'm still coming in first, but it, it'll be good to see who comes in second. Do you think the Dolphins would ever sanction this? I feel like if uh, if the Dolphins said, hey, coming up on, uh, you know, training camp, you know, practice on Tuesday morning, come watch all the receivers race. I feel like you get a lot of people out there. Yeah, I think so. But, I mean, I think they'll, try to, I think they'll definitely hold me out because they'll be competing for second place, not first. So, um, they know it's a guaranteed win for me. And the receivers know that. For sure. So, but I mean, hey, you know, if they want to, if they want to test the waters, I mean, hey, we can definitely do it. All right. So there's something else. I mean, the the speed thing we know, and I, I'm not going to argue with you about that because uh, we've seen you on the field, and and I think it's pretty clear you're the fastest guy on the team. The strength thing, though, we were told to ask you about this because you believe you're also the strongest guy on the team, pound for pound. Is that accurate? Yes. I'm 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 an ant man, a human ant. <laughs> That is me. Pound for pound, definitely the strongest guy. That's easy. Easy said and done. I was a power lifter in, um, in high school. What's an example of your strength? So what, what's, what's your King Grant clearing at a gym? Let's say squat easily in the 600s. Bench press, you know, I work out with 315, and I'm only 175. So, I mean, you, you name it. I mean, I, I can work out with a lineman if you want me to. 
<laughs> uh, Jakeem, Jakeem, I'm brilliant. also 175. Um, I, I'm not clearing 315. I, I maybe 115 after <laughs> breakfast, possibly. Uh, yes. so, so I don't think you and I are a fair competition there. But I, okay, so the linemen. All right, so let's pick one. All right, give me your guys. Josh there. Sitton. Josh Sitton, right? Josh Sitton, big new yeah. contract, big new addition. Offensive line is going to be much improved this year. We've heard a lot about. It. He's one of the highest ranking guards in the NFL. Everybody's excited about it. You, Josh Sitton. Strength competition. How does that go? If he wins, he wouldn't win by a lot. I'm telling you now. Because, for one, my arms are shorter. Definitely can probably bench just as much, if not the same. But, yeah, definitely, like, I have shorter arms and I'm strong. So, therefore, he has a long way to go. I don't. Like, as soon as I rack the bar off off the rack, you know, all I have to do is go down an inch and pu- push it back up another inch. So, that's already one rep for me. I'm, I'm good. And, see – that's what happens is they have longer arms. And so they get fatigued a lot faster than me. And so, but I'm telling you now, like, in the weight room, it's like Dave Palooka has to tell me, hey, Jakeem, you can't squat today because you're going to tighten up your lower back. And I mean, if, if you don't believe me, you can ask him. Jakeem Grant is with us here on Five Reasons Sports. And w- one of the things that, that we want to do with you, Jakeem, is kind of, you know, go through – your life story, your life in football, and, and kind of where you've arrived now. So uh, for, for those of us that, that don't really know what it was like to grow up where you grew up, uh, can you sort of describe it for the audience? I'll say where I grew up was, you know, big adversity. Um, grew up in a single-parent home. Um, mom raised three grown young men who are all great grown young men right now. Uh, and, you know, it was just – it was hard. You know, it was hard for my mom. I always seen my mom, you know – work her butt off to provide for us. Um, no, none of our dads were, were around. And, you know, we were just, you know, we want to, you know, do whatever we can to, you know, show our mom that, you know, we, we appreciate her and, and we love her. And so, you know, and I actually, nobody knows, like I actually didn't start playing football. My mom put me in football because I also, I love skating. I love skating. I was just, I was a skater. Like, so we're at the skating ring one day. And we're playing a game called Sharks in the Meadow, and where it was four guys on uh, skate, and and it was like tons of little fishes, meadows, and so I was the last one to get out. It was four guys on skate, and I made two dudes fall at the same time, and my mom was sitting there watching. And the next day, the next thing you know, she signs me up for football the next day, and I'm like, "What are you doing? Like, I just I just did that for fun." And it was the rest was history, you know. Um, I've always been uh, an underdog just because of my size, you know, and and that's where I make up with my speed, uh, quickness, strength, and I've always played with a chip on my shoulder. Everybody feels like, you know, I'm a short guy and this or that. To me, you know, I'm just as big as them. Like, in my head, my, my mentality is, you know, I'm just as big as y'all. You know, I always tell people, they're like, man, you're small. I was like, no, I'm not small, I'm short. So, uh, well, man, you know, I've always been an underdog, never been, you know, the top prospect, you know, going into uh, high school or at college. You know, I always have to grind and grind and, and do the extra and do the little things, you know, to get that, you know, that spotlight. And, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. You know, I'm going to continue to climb Mount Everest. And once I get to the top, I'll be looking for another mountain to climb. And so um, that's, that's, that's just me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a hard worker. I love to work hard and, and I just love to compete, you know, and that's been my, uh, that's been me my whole life. You know, I love to compete in anything that I do, you know, whether it's, it's not football, you know, so, um, but you know, I'm just, I'm hungry and I always want to be the best. And it's, it's not about, you know, Oh, I just made it to the NFL, but you know, I look at, you know, Barry Sanders and Deion Sanders and, and all those guys that's wearing a gold jacket, and I'm like, you know, they did it, you know, so why can't I, you know? So um, that's my ultimate goal, you know, and that's at the top of Mount Everest, and I'm just just trying to continue to climb every single day until I get that. Jakeem, uh, most mothers don't put their kids in football. They try to keep their kids from football. So, yeah. <laughs> so right? So so how did, how did that conversation go? And I've also heard – um, that's your mom, who I know you're close to, uh, but she, she gives you pointers on the field. Like she's, uh, you know, she's pretty into your play and, and sometimes uh, has kind of a critical eye for it. So, so how did, so how was that relationship and, 
and, and kind of when she put you in at the very beginning, is it something that you wanted to do or, or how did you sort of feel that process out? Um, Obviously, she put us in there probably because we were um, making too much noise in the house, playing, probably breaking stuff. You know, um, my oldest brother was love, was in love with WWE, so he used to try all the moves on us. And, you know, sometimes, you know, he used to try it on my little brother. He used to cry. And then my mom used to be like, hey, y'all go outside. And so next thing you know, I, that's probably the reason why she wanted to sign us some football. But, you know, I love my mom. She She's basically uh, – like I'm my worst critic, but if not, that's her. She's the next. She's next to it. And and like for an example, like out and I was playing Oklahoma, Oklahoma State in college. You know, I was going off. Of, I probably had like 180 something yards, and I had one drop. And she was like, you know, good game, but what about the drop? I'm like, who cares? I scored two <laughs> touchdowns. And, and with a 180 something yards, she was like, she was, and and that's what I love about my mom. She she wants me to be great, and and everything that I do, she wants me to you know perfect it, and I, that's that's exactly where I get it from. You know, um, she pushes us to to be the best that we can be, and she still does it to this day. And I'm I keep telling her like, hey, mom, I'm, like I'm 25, going on 26. Can when is this gonna stop? She's like, it, it will never stop. And I'm like, oh my god. I've got two follow-ups on this. So the first one is, uh, Ethan, you're saying that moms don't put, uh, don't put their kids in football. Not in Texas. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, not in Texas. Te- Do you have a story of, like, just how big football is in Texas? I-, I grew up here in South Florida, and in South Florida, football is massive. But I feel like in Texas, it's a whole other level. Man, it, I'm telling you, it is. A whole- if you could ever get a chance to go watch one of the top high school football teams in Texas, I would say go and watch it and see how many – People are in, the, are in the stands. It's it's like you're at a college game. I kid you not. It's it's a big thing in Texas. It's like we live, breathe football. Like we don't. I think we don't even care about other sports. We just love football. Once football comes around and there's a Friday night game, I think like the whole city just shuts down and everybody is at the game. And that's what I like. You know, growing up in Texas, it's just football, football, football. And from if you can go even go to a Pop Warner game, like a Pee Wee game, and you will see like tons of people just like at the Pee Wee game, just like, man, like, why is there so many people at this little kid's game? And like, that's just how it is in Texas. Like, football is everything. The other one was uh, so you and your brothers are big WWE fans, and uh, you do all the moves yeah. in, your, in, your, in your kitchen. Uh, was there one that like you guys would do all the time? Like, would you guys like stone cold stunner each other? Like, like what, what would like what were your big wrestling moves that that you would either injure yourselves or would get your mom upset at you guys with? Um, my oldest brother would definitely uh, F five my <laughs> youngest brother all the time. Um, Brock Lesnar, he used just, just uh, he used to try moves on him all the time. Me, I was a, I was a Shawn Michaels fan, you know, uh, oh, heartbreak yeah. kid. You're, you're, you're go, so you're, so is, you're going for a little sweet chin music on your brothers, then? Yeah, that was yeah, sweet chin music. That was that was <laughs> that was my thing. And so, but it was I tell you one instance. Um, it was we were going to, I know we were. My mom was on her way home from work. She used to get off work at like five o'clock, and um. My brother was uh, practicing a move on on my little brother, and so what he did, he slammed my little brother on the bed hard. My little brother bounces off the bed, and back goes right through the wall. Boom! Big hole in the wall. And this is where we're supposed to go to. I think to a, a, like uh, a trampoline place. And so what my little brother does, he's like, he's like, man, we're going to get in trouble. We're going to get in trouble. We have to figure out something to do. And so. My little brother goes, and I, I kid you, we're like, we're probably like 12, 11, you know, 10 and stuff like that. So my little brother goes, grabs the paint. And I look at him, I'm like, you can't paint over a hole. And I'm like, and he's like, he, and my oldest brother's like, okay, I know what we can do. We can take my Undertaker poster and put it over a hole. And so she would never know. And we could just rearrange the room. And so she never found out about the hole. It, until we got ready to move out the house. <laughs> and, so, and, and, and you're going, yeah, no, we should so, leave the Undertaker poster there. No, no, but we got to yeah, take, exactly. no, no, just, just leave it there. <laughs> and, and she was so, and she was so mad at us when we got ready to move out. <laughs> and it was, it was just hilarious. But yeah, man, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a Shawn Michaels fan. 
uh, especially when they had the uh, Degeneration X. Man, that was that's that's when wrestling was, you know, real wrestling. I lo- I love wrestling back then, but now I don't. I don't know what's going on now. You, you know, you know what? Actually, Jakeem, we have a wrestling podcast in our network called Smark Your Territory. And after those guys hear this, uh, you're going to expect another phone call. I'm just telling you. I'm just talking wrestling with Jakeem. They're going to want to talk wrestling with you. We'll get back to Jakeem Grant here in a second. But want to tell you about a party that we are having on Friday night. It's a Texas Roadhouse in Miramar right off of I-75 on Miramar Parkway just west uh, close. If you know where the Chick-fil-A is, that's like the most popular restaurant in South Florida, that Chick-fil-A in Miramar Parkway. It's like a line. It's like a line down the street all the way to Doral. Um, it's right in that shopping center. So just check out Texas Roadhouse. Here's what's going to be happening. We're going to have drink specials. We're going to have $3 for three yards per carry, $3 Coors Banquet, 22 ounce, $5 for five reason sports, $5 Patron margaritas. Also going to have free appetizers out there. We're going to have some of our hosts, some of them you want to avoid. We will tell you which ones when you get in the door. <laughs> We're also going to have giveaways. We're going to give away two Dolphins tickets, not to the preseason, to the regular season, the regular season opener against Tennessee. We're going to be raffling those off. They're good seats. So definitely come check us out. You get to meet the hosts, hang out a little bit, and we'll get a chance to watch the Dolphins play in their preseason game against Carolina. We have the whole outside bar. We've got five TVs, so it's going to be a great time. So come to Texas Roadhouse Friday night, 7 o'clock, and it's free. Now, back to Jakeem Grant. I want to move on a little bit, but but stay sort of with, with what you dealt with growing up um, because you had to sort of work through a lot of violence um, it, it, that affected yeah. people, that affected people in your life. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that and, and sort of your memories of, of, of some of those people and, and what, what they went through and how it affected you. Um, definitely grew up in, um, you know, um, a lot of gang violence um, throughout, you know, high school and things like that. And I watched, I, Actually, I was at, I was actually at, my brother was going to a party and him and my younger brother were going to a party and I went to my girlfriend's house and I get a call and my oldest brother got shot in the neck. He's helped, I got, thank God he's, he's not paralyzed. He's, he came out perfectly fine. And I like, after that, that, that just turned me in a whole nother direction because I was so scared of losing my brother and and I lost plenty of friends uh, throughout the process with that. And I was just like, um, it's, it's, it was selfish of me and my brothers to be doing that when my mom is working her butt off to be, you know, provide for us and do this. And we're out here endangering our, our, ourselves um, and being caught up with the wrong people. And so what I did, you know, I was just like, you know, uh, my oldest brother also sat me down was, and just told me like, um, hey, Jakeem, you got a gift. You have a gift. Um, I just want you to just, you know, stay away from this. You know, I can never be in your shoes. I can never do this. I can never do the things that you do. Um, so I want you to, you know, continue to chase chase that dream. And after he told me that, you know, I just got my head on straight and just continue to, you know, grind. And, and I want to, you know, get my, and, and get my brothers and my mom well taken care of because we went through so much, you know, um, we never, we didn't always stay in the best area. So it was kind of like, you know, our friends were wrapped into it. And so we, we got influenced to be into it. And so, but man, it, it was, it's, 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 when you talk about adversity, um, it was, it was big, it was big growing up in the rough neighborhoods and just, just seeing it every single day, you know, every single day, whether it's your friend, um, dying or you know people getting shot at or anything like that like it's it's you know my brother's been shot i've been shot at you know everything you can name it you know and and i never would ever try to go back to that life because you know there's there's no return you know it's either either you're either in dead or jail you're either dead or in jail and so and it's a it's, it's it's more it's more things to life than that and i felt like you know my mom didn't have, she had no idea we were, uh, we were actually in it until my brother got shot. Um, we tried to keep it from her as best as we, 
we could because mama mama didn't play that at all <laughs> so but man it was it was definitely rough it was it was rough and you never forget where you came from and and i think that's what also motivates me to continue to grind harder and harder every single day because i also want to make sure my mom never lifts a finger again you know um she took care of three grown boys and we didn't make it easy on her we didn't at all and so uh, I feel like she she deserves the world, and and I, I want to give it, I want to give that to her, and that's why I continue to you know go hard every single day, even when I don't feel like it. I know that you know my mom woke up every single day with going and working two jobs to you know provide for us, and so why can't I do it? You know I I, I have it easier easier than she does than she did, so. You know, why can't I do the same thing? And then you become a father. And while that's not difficult, I imagine yeah. it's been a hugely rewarding experience for you. I imagine, you know, ha- having a kid, at, at, you know, while you're in college, having all this stuff while you're growing up forces you to grow up very quickly. So what was the experience of becoming a father like for you? And how has it changed you? Um, Definitely matured me quick. Um, Knowing what's, you know, just getting my priorities straight, you know, and just knowing what comes first. And the thing is, it's like I had, I had, you know, my, um, had my son first, uh, Jakeem Jr. And then next thing you know, another year come around, God bless me with two beautiful girls, uh, Kaylee and Kylie, twin girls. And, you know, I'm having all, I'm having them all in college while, you know, doing training camp, um, actually working a job in the summer, just trying to provide for them, you know, and just trying to get everything that I didn't have for them. And, and it, it was, it was hard. It was hard. It was definitely stressful. And Lord knows, I, you know, I thank him, you know, that was the only way I got through it, you know, with, you know, support from, you know, my coaches and teammates and things like that. But man, it was, it was, it was definitely hard with, uh, with having those, with having those little ones in um, college because there's, there's, I couldn't go out and party with, with my boys. I couldn't go out and live the college life that I wanted to live because, you know, I, I told, you know, that was my responsibility. I had to make sure that my my kids were well taken care of, and and that's what I did. So, Jakeem, I have one four-year-old daughter. Um, you not only have a son, but you have two four-year-old daughters. Um, and I know, I, I know how much attention that requires, um, even if they're the greatest kids in the world. So how do you balance it? now and like do, is there an understanding kind of of what daddy does now H- how into football have you gotten them so far are they afraid of you getting hurt like wh- how how have your children kind of experienced uh you know what you do for a living they they love it uh honestly they love watching me play football and, and my twins are always like look there goes daddy and then my son always tries to come on the field no matter if he's in the stands or anything he always want to be in tune, want to play, take the ball and run the opposite way. It doesn't matter what it is, but, uh, you know, I, I kind of balance it out as, you know, I, you know, get everything done here in my workplace, whether they're studying a film, anything, you know, work, workout, anything. I do it all, side, all in the building so that when I get outside of here, I can focus on being a family man that I am. And so, you know, just, just doing those things so that I don't, you know, overlap the the two and not be able to you know spend as much time with with them and this and that and you know it, it, it's hard sometimes you know where I have to tell them you know hey you know daddy gotta daddy has to go to work and she's and my twins are like no I like daddy can I come I'm like you can't come I'm sorry and then and they give me a little puppy dog face and stuff like that you know it, it's those are the hard times and stuff like that. You never want to tell your girls no about anything. If anybody that have little girls know what I'm talking about. So, um, mm-hmm. but my my son my son is like, yeah, whatever, Dad, go ahead. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> like, <laughs> my twins, those are my those are my little angels. You know, my my son don't my son don't even he 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 really like he's like Dad, yeah, okay. He he's like whenever you're ready. Whenever I'm ready to play, and I'll find you, Dad. But until then, I don't want to be bothered with you. But my twins are love to just sit up under me and just they they, they just break my heart every single time I have to leave the house. Like, Daddy, can I come, Daddy? I want to go. I want to go to the park. 
can you take me to the park? I'm like, I can. I got work. And they're like, oh. And I'm like, do you really have to do that every single time? Like, <laughs> you know how I feel? So, but. J- J- Jakeem, just buy yeah. them another Disney doll. That's what I've learned to do with mine. Just, I, I we, do. We, we, I we, 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 we have 12 Moana dolls here in the house. Uh, just, just keep buying Disney dolls. Keep feeding the beast. This is the Five Reason Sports Network. Sports by Miami for Miami on demand. We now have 10 podcasts in the network posting roughly 15 times per week. All can be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and several cross-platform apps. We are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Here's some of what you missed last week on Miami Heat Beat. I'm in love with this young core. I think they have three really solid starter-type players in Winslow, J. Rich, and Bam. You know, it's funny. I was literally just thinking that to myself like five minutes ago, but the fact that Gianni agrees with me really makes me second guess it. <laughs> if you want to get involved as a sponsor or a contributor, reach out to us at number five reason sports on Twitter. And don't forget to punch five reasons in your search bar and then hit subscribe. I want to move with you here real quick. Cause I know you got a meeting to get to. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about football and kind of what you're, you're trying to accomplish right now in this training camp and this season. We saw you get more of an opportunity in the passing game at the end of last year, and and I think you showed the ability to do more than just be a speed guy who could beat a corner, but that there's other things you can do uh, as a receiver. What have you worked on this offseason to make yourself more of a factor this year? You think we'll see you some in the slot, some of the things that Jarvis used to do, um, how much outside – just kind of what has been your priority from a football perspective uh, this off season? Um, I'll say uh, route running, um, hands, and just knowing covers. Just um, I'll be everywhere, you know, slot, you know, outside, mostly outside. Um, but yeah, man, I just feel like you know to up my game, I have to you know get back to the basics, get the route running down, sticks, not stumbling out the break, you know, and trusting my hands and making those catches. And developing that trust in, you know, Ryan and, and just getting the getting chemistry, getting that connection. Because once I get it in practice, you know, in the game, there's no hesitation where if he wanna throw me the ball and he knows I'm gonna win and and that's the thing, you know, and you know, I've worked hard. I, I actually, you know, trained with uh Kenny this whole off season. You know, not not only did, you know, he helped me with, you know, the breaks and, and working on my hands. It was just also, you know, we actually created a, a brotherhood, you know. So whenever I get out there and we're going um, with each other, you know, I don't want to let Kenny down. So, yeah, I'm going to go out there and I'm I'm going to catch every ball that I have to because I don't want to let my brother down. And so, you know, that's that's the biggest aspect that I continue to, you know, focus on each and every day, you know, is the route running and catching you know, make sure I see the ball all the way in and not try to make a play before I catch it. And and I felt like that was my biggest problem um, throughout the years, the previous years, is, you know, I always tried to make a big play before I even, before the ball got in my hand. So that's what caused me to drop the ball. And so um, just, just route running and, and just in um, the hands, you know, just focus and focusing because, you know, because I have great hands. It's just, seeing it all the way in is what I have to do and 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 not get so antsy whenever whenever the ball is coming. I know that I got a big play uh coming ahead. So but you know, I work on that every single day and I'm gonna continue to do that uh throughout my whole career. All right, and, and I wanna close here with you, Jakeem, on your breakout performances last year. So in the New England game, you catch your first touchdown, uh, you know, going over Malcolm Butler. Everyone talks about, oh, wh- why didn't Malcolm Butler play in the Super Bowl? I feel like it started w- with what happened in Miami against Jakeem Grant. But uh, but when when you kind of look back on those moments last year, both that touchdown and then obviously the 100-yard game and the 65-yard against Kansas City last year, I, I imagine you, you, you strike me as a very confident guy based off our conversation earlier about how fast you are. But still, how cool was it to have those breakthroughs in the receiver? Receiving game in in games that were that were big. One of them one of them led to a big win over the over the Patriots, and the other was obviously your best performance of your career against Kansas City. How important for you were those breakthroughs? Those are very important because you know um, I got the opportunity um, when Coach put me in the game, and I just have to seize the moment and show Coach that I can be you know a great aspect to this offense, and I can play receiver, and I'm not just a return man. So. Um, those opportunities came and I had to seize the moment, you know, 
And that's all it was about, you know, what can you do when that opportunity comes for you? And, and that's exactly what I did, you know, and, you know, and I thank God, you know, for everything that he allowed me to accomplish, you know, and, but I had to, I, I had to, you know, um, I, I just didn't want to be a return man or some type of gadget guy or anything like that. I wanted to be a receiver slash return man. And so, and I'm working on that every single day, you know, I'm still, you know, working on that and I'm going to continue to work on that. And so that I can have more big games like, you know, the Kansas city and against new England, not just, you know, a spark at the end of the season. I wanted it to be, uh, throughout the whole season. All right, Jakeem, this is incredible. Great stuff on your family life and obviously now your career in football. And we really appreciate you being open and sharing with us. Again, you can follow him on Twitter at underscore the dream is here. He wears jersey number 19 for the Miami Dolphins who are back in action. I told you earlier uh, against the Carolina Panthers and you can come actually watch it with us at the Texas Roadhouse. So be sure to check that out. And Jakeem, really appreciate you joining us. I appreciate you guys, man. Nosotros somos Cinco Razones Podcast, el primer podcast en español del Network de Five Reasons. Lo que más me gusta y es una de mis cinco razones es that I can speak in English. Everything Miami regarding the sports. Junto a Alejandro Villegas y a Alejandro Soto, yo soy Ricardo Montes de Oca. Bye, have a great time. Cinco Razones, el nuevo podcast aquí con Leandro y Ricardo debatiendo como siempre, llevándonos la contraria. Les va a gustar. Pregúntale a Siri. Siri, would you make... Jose Ureña, a closer. Here's what I found. Ah, mira, me, me da, te dio las estadísticas. Me... Sí, me da unos lugares que no puedo, no puedo mencionar. <laughs> Enjoy the ride.